Mm -hmm. Oh, everyone in front of the ship? You're back, but where's Bastila? I is she alive? What happened inside that temple? H how did you know that she was there? Uh, because, I mean, or that the others had the vis vision of her and told you. Because how would you know that she was there? Um... Hmm. No time. We have to get off this planet and get to the Star Forge. Hold on a second. What about Bastila? Wasn't she in the temple? What, what happened? I can't even ask him how he knows. Hmm. Bastila has fallen to the dark side. She fled to the Star Forge. The dark side? Bastila? No! No! How could that happen? She was always in danger of being seduced by the dark side, Karth. Bastila was strong, but she was always impatient and headstrong. Malak preyed upon her weakness. This planet is a tainted place. The Star Forge and the Temple have twisted the Force into an instrument of evil, just as Malak has twisted Bastila into a servant of the Sith. Hmm. Hmm. She can still be saved, can't she? Malak has a strong hold on Bastila now. It will be difficult for her to break free of his influence. Especially considering her long association with you. Remember the bond that was forged between you when she rekindled the spark that was your life. Through that bond she touched your memories, and also the echo of the dark taint within you. But there's still hope for her, right? I mean, Revan rejected the dark side, so Basila could too, right? We still might be able to save her. Yeah, we can try, and we will. I don't know what fate awaits us, but I sense Bastila still has a role to play in the events to come. I have no doubt she will be waiting for us on the Star Forge. No doubt. But let's go then before she has time to organize a bigger welcoming committee. All right then. Are we going straight into cutscene or can I still walk around in the ship and talk? Yeah, I can talk. All right, because I still have Bastila and oh, no Candorus talk anymore. Okay, but I can talk to Jolie. Yeah, because I was not able to speak to him before, because I don't know if that was a bug or Got anything. something on your mind, do you? You mentioned something about your adventuring days. Did I say that? Strange the tricks memory plays on you when you get older. So you weren't an adventurer? Didn't I say that my past was my affair? You don't see me poking and prodding you with questions, do you? <laughs> You've already said so much. I'm curious. I'm not here to satisfy your curiosity. No staring at the old man. That's what the sign says, damn it. And besides, <laughs> you don't really want to hear about me. We're talking ancient history. Probably before you were born. History bores kids. Proven fact. <laughs> well, old people love to talk about history. Proven fact. Oh, fine, fine. Have it your way. Just don't cry about it later. <laughs> yes, yes, I was an adventurer. Happy now? I wasn't even done with my Jedi training back then. I had a full head of hair and an eagerness to see absolutely everything. Sound mm. familiar? The Council was never happy with willful, brash Jolie Bindo, you see. Even less so when I began my smuggling career. So you were a smuggler? Don't look at me like that, damn it. I wasn't always the wrinkled coot I am now, you know. I sure. can still fight, too. <laughs> So wipe off that smirk I see there. At the time, the Yukata system imagine. was interdicted by its own king. He preferred to keep his people starving and poor, all the better to oppress them. The Senate was trying to negotiate a peace, but they were getting nowhere as usual. I decided I wasn't going to wait. I found myself a ship and a partner, and we began smuggling food and supplies to the Yukata citizenry through the blockade. Hmm. But where did you get the credits for all the supplies? Well, we didn't buy all the equipment, per se. Some were happy to donate goods. Some we just, uh, knew had more than they could use. Uh-huh, so you stole it. Stole is such a harsh word. Uh -huh. They would have donated those goods readily enough if they were compassionate. I considered <laughs> it a tax on the greedy. We only got caught once. A lone Yukatish frigate shot us down and forced a crash landing. I thought the Force had abandoned me, as I remember. 
And what happened then? Well, as it happens, getting shot down turned out to be very fortunate. That day was the day I... The day you what? Well, that... that was the day I met my wife. Bad memory, I take it? No, no, that was a good memory. There are just much worse ones that followed. I... if it's all the same to you, I'd prefer to stop talking now. My mouth is starting to draw flies. Journal Entry you got Jolie to talk a little about his adventuring days, and during his tale he mentioned the fact that he had a wife. He didn't want to talk about her, but you might be able to ask him about it later once you gain more experience. Do we ever get more experience? You, you. you mentioned something about your wife before. I don't want to talk about that. Hmm. I don't mean to pry, but... Yes, you do. You may mean well enough, but my private affairs are just that. Private, let me tell you something. Once you've lived as many years as I have, you'll have yourself a long, long list of memories. If you're lucky, most of them will be good. If you're not, some will be bad. If you're really unlucky, some will be so bad you never want to be reminded of them again, ever. You'll go far <laughs> away to a place that doesn't hold any memories at all. And there you'll be happy just to forget and be forgotten. Hmm. But I want to hear what you have have to say. Let me ask you this. Have you ever been in love? Truly in love, I mean, and not simple infatuation. Um, well... Exactly. You're still at the beginning of your life. There will be women in your life. Perhaps many women. But if you're fortunate, you'll find love once. The Jedi, with their damnable sense of over-caution, would tell you love is something to avoid. Thankfully, anyone who's even partially alive knows that's not true. Hmm. That's what I've always thought. Love doesn't lead to the dark side. Passion can lead to rage and fear, and can be controlled. But passion is not the same thing as love. Controlling your passions while being in love, that's what they should teach you to beware. But love itself will save you, not condemn you. Uh, listen to me go on as if I had all the answers. What do I know of love anymore? I'm just a lonely old man who's not even a Jedi. Hmm. <laughs> Sounds like love is something you should have avoided now. Um... Not even a Jedi? You mean not any... No. no, I want to hear what you have to say. You do, do you? Yes. I wouldn't listen too closely. I'm no authority on anything. I just think that the greatest things in life shouldn't be avoided because they come with a few complications. Love I causes agree. pain, certainly. Inevitably, love is going to lead to as much sorrow and regret as it does joy. I suppose there are perfect eternal loves out there, but I haven't seen any. And how do you deal with the bad part of love is what determines your character. What determines the dark side's hold over you. Hmm. You don't think love can work? I suppose it could. It would take a strong person to make that kind of commitment, I think. Someone with a great sense of self. I'll tell you one thing. Sometimes, no matter how hard you try, you and the one you love simply aren't meant to be together. The trick is to know when that is. To know when it's time to fight and when it's time to part ways. <laughs> there I go, waxing philosophical again. Somebody blast me already. <laughs> Let's get going before I start talking in riddles, damn it. And another journal entry. Jolie talked a little bit about his wife and why he didn't agree with the Jedi credo that love should be forbidden. He spoke of the Jedi with a great deal of bitterness, in fact. He might be able to ask him about it later once you gain more experience, which is now. Got something on your mind, do you? Uh, da -da. Why did you leave the Jedi? <laughs> Who said I left the Jedi? Mm, you did. Uh, sorry, you did. You said you weren't a Jedi any longer. Well. Technically, I was only a Padawan. Not that that makes a difference to most, but as for the Order itself, no, I never left it. It left me. Hmm, okay. What do you mean by it left you? You know what I hate? Well, you know, lots of things really, but I'm old and easily annoyed, but that's besides the point. What I really hate are how most people view the Jedi. Everyone thinks that the Jedi are perfect. 
that they can do no wrong. They think the Jedi Council is completely incapable of injustice. Hmm. It's completely incapable of injustice? Um, I certainly don't think that. I guess you aren't as stupid as you sometimes act. <laughs> what? No doubt you've been on the receiving end of Jedi justice at least once, eh? And I'm uh. not even talking about how some of us fall to the dark side. No, that's plenty indication of our fallibility. But it's something else entirely. No, I'm talking about how more than often not, your average robe-wearing Jedi can try to do the right thing and still be completely wrong. Hmm. But nobody can be right about everything. That's true, but it's not what I meant. I guess I'm not being clear, am I? Come to think <laughs> of it, I don't have to be clear. Someone my age is entitled to ramble, damn it. But for your sake, I'll try to explain. <laughs> Thank I'll you. tell you a little tale about a Jedi master I once knew. Hortaf, I think. Or was it Hortoff? I could never get it. <laughs> um, go on, I'll listen. Where was I then? Oh, oh yes, Master Hortaf. He was a kindly old Jedi who meant well, but the most nearsighted thing in the core, I swear. He would walk into walls, knock over tables, mistake apprentices for rancor beasts, what? that sort of thing. And he was too proud to submit to proper treatment. Some used to counsel him in the urge to use the Force, Master Hordath. Allow the Force to see for you. But he refused to believe that his eyes were failing. He simply squinted more and more as the years went on. The other Jedi resignedly passing it off as the amusing quirk of a compassionate old man. <laughs> um, go on. So, one day a young Padawan meets Master Hordath in the courtyard and, not knowing of his blindness, asks him for directions to the council. Quite sure of himself, Hordath gave the lad directions, which happened to lead back outside and away from the Enclave. The Padawan is confused, naturally, he asks if Master Hordath is sure, and of course Master Hordath says that he is. The Padawan suggests that perhaps he should ask someone else. But the proud Hordath now feels insulted. He tells the Padawan to take the route he prescribed and no other. Rather dejectedly, the Padawan did as he was told, and so ended up leaving the Jedi Order forever. It was decided that the boy's fate was to leave the Order anyway. Though, whether that was out of respect for Hordath or because the boy went on to something else, well, we'll never know. Hmm. Um, is he... I don't think he is the boy, is it? I think he's not that stupid. But, uh, so what does the Padawan leaving the Jedi have to do with the Jedi leaving you? Not much. I never <laughs> knew the Padawan nor met Master Hordath himself. Okay. He was before my time. Uh-huh. And I don't get it. The tale is about blindness, and I thought the point was clear. At any rate, you think about it. You're the one who asked why the Jedi left me, remember? Now let's get going. My feet are itching for a good run. I don't get it for real. Um, you, oh, sorry. you successfully got Jolie to talk about the Jedi, and he told the tale about how they often uh, less than perfect. How they are often less than perfect. He might take... Sorry, he might talk some more if you ask later, once you've gained more experience. Got something on you. Uh, why do you, what do you know about the Sith? Bad, bad men. Women too, to be fair. Yes. Um, but you must know more than that. Oh, indeed. They make a fine sandwich also. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell the Jedi Council I said that. Okay. Um, you're being elusive on purpose, again. <sighs> and just what gave you the impression that I know anything more about the Sith than you do? Well, you did. You said you fought them. Oh, that's right. Damn the years of the young. I was expecting you to be your usual inattentive self when I mentioned that. <laughs> so it's true, yes. I fought plenty of Sith. That was during the time of Exar Kun. Oh, 40 years ago now. Has it been that long? Are these Sith the same as the ones who followed me? No, no, of course not. The Sith have come and gone for ages. They were not called the Sith many thousands of years ago, perhaps. But the dark side was always present, without a doubt. Oh, sure, occasionally the light side comes close to vanquishing the dark. But the dark always returns. 
The fact that Exar Kun was defeated didn't mean the Sith would never return, as they obviously have now. Everyone knows that. Hmm. And who is Exar Kun? Uh, Exar was a Jedi who was corrupted by ghosts of the old Sith, or so they say. He attempted to conquer the Republic and create a new golden age of the Sith. Sort of like Revan? I mean, me? I assume he was killed? Better to say he was defeated, but essentially yes. The victory did not come easily, however. Are these the same Sith that we're, that we're fighting now? No, no, of course not. The Sith have uh, come and gone for ages. He said that before, They were not yeah. called the Sith many... Th oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay. The fact... He said that before, okay. So tell me what you know about the Sith. A Sith believes he commands the Force, but it is the dark side who commands him. You know this. There is little else I could truly add. Hmm. What happened during the war with Exar Kun then? That is not a pleasant time to remember. After Exar Kun fell to the dark side, he attempted to recruit other Jedi to his cause. What surprised us, what took us completely unprepared, was how utterly successful he was. Many Jedi joined him and became Sith themselves. Why they did, I... I will never truly know, but they did. Battle broke out throughout the Order, pupil against a master. We fought ourselves. Hmm. But you exterminate all the traitors, right? Oh, easy now to call them traitors. But tell me, how do you fight against someone that you love? Pah, I dislike such memories. What? leaves a taste in the mouth that uh, it is a sadness I thought I had put aside long ago. Ask me about the war some other time, just not now. I would prefer to be by myself for now. Was his wife someone of the betrayers, maybe? Johnny talked about the Sith and mentioned that he had been involved in the Sith war involving the, the infamous Dark Jedi Exar Kun. It was obviously an unpleasant memory for him. However, and he told you, to ask him about it later when you gained more experience. Got something on your mind, do you? Do you want to talk about the war now? Not particularly. <laughs> no time like the present. I suppose you're going to nag me until I cough it up, aren't you? Yes. Nothing is private anymore, it looks like. Mm -hmm. <sighs> There's no escaping it, I guess. So be it. My wife's name was Nayama. She was the Yukatis enforcer who shot me out of the sky, if you remember. No. Uh -huh. Okay, um... <laughs> I didn't ask about your wife, old man, no. I guess her wife was one of the traitors. Where does, what does your wife have to do with the war? My wife had plenty to do with the war. Upon meeting her, I knew right away that she was strong in the Force. That's why she was able to shoot me down. Nayama was a marvel of a woman. Fiery, determined, smart. She dragged me to the capital and foiled three of my attempts to escape prison. Oh, and that body. The war? Well, yes, that. <clears throat> Needless to say, I eventually won her over. <laughs> her body, that yes. Was <laughs> after I kidnapped her upon being broken out of the Yukata's prison, mind you. But, uh, that's another story entirely. At any rate, I wanted <laughs> to train her in the Jedi way. The Council refused my request, naturally. I was still a Padawan at the time. I was an experienced Padawan, surely, but... Not yet ready to be a full Jedi, and certainly not ready to train another. Especially not one so old as my wife. Hmm. So you disobe disobeyed the Council, like I did. I did. I wasn't the first and I won't be the last. The problem with self-righteous folk is they think they're more right than everyone else. I believed in her and trained her in secret. I ignored her willful nature. I loved her too much to see fault in her. And she loved me too. I know she did. At the time, our love was a shared bliss. Better than anything I had known before or since. So what happened? Exar Kun is what happened. Nayama was inspired by Exar's promises of a new golden age. She wanted to join him. She came to me, pleading with me to throw aside what she called the decrepit trappings of the Jedi. To join her in Exar's war. So she had fallen to the dark side? I hadn't thought so. Not right then. I was too proud to believe that of her. I had trained her myself. I loved her. I pleaded with her to reconsider, to think about all that she was throwing away. To think about what she would become. She would have none of it. Finally, in frustration, she attacked me. 
She drew her lightsaber and attempted to strike me down. It was a scene being repeated everywhere throughout the galaxy. Pupil against master. In my case, it was a long and terrible battle, but I defeated her. So you killed her? No, no. I had her at my mercy, disarmed and defenseless. She looked up at me and she knew. She knew I couldn't do it. Hmm. Sounds familiar. Seems like the Jedi don't like killing their helpless enemies. But I should have. Sometimes I convince myself otherwise, but it's no use. She had fallen to the dark side when she raised her saber against me, and I let her go. To my shame, she went on to kill many Jedi during the war, until she herself was slain in the final battle. I grieved for her death, inevitable as it was, even as the Jedi Council put me on trial for my actions once the war was over. They put you on trial? I had trained Nayama against their wishes. I had failed to kill her when I had the chance, and she went on to kill others. Not to mention that I had remained a Padawan throughout the war. A formality, perhaps, but with the trial, it had to be decided if I was worthy to become a Jedi at all. It was a travesty, of course. I told you that even the Jedi were capable of great injustices, didn't I? Mm, yeah. I agree with you. They destroyed my mind, after all. But I deserve to be tried. They found me innocent. Even though I deserved every punishment and more, they let me go. Mitigating circumstances, they said. I deserved compassion, they said. They said mm. I had learned wisdom the hard way. For all I had done during the war, they wished to raise me to full Jedi status at long last. That, that was when the Jedi left me. That was when they failed me. Hmm. But you're wrong about that. You, you did deserve compassion. For my pride? For my cowardice? Which do you think is the act more befitting a Jedi? They may have been hmm. able to forgive me. I could never forgive myself. And you still believe love is worth the risk? I... yes. I do, I suppose. Does that surprise you? Uh, it is all so long ago. Lost in the winds, I suppose. Nobody cares what an old man believes anymore, do they? Let's continue on with the task at hand. I would prefer to think of the present today. Alright. We successfully convinced Jolie to talk about the Sith War, how his wife turned to the dark side, and how he ultimately abandoned the Order for not holding him as responsible for her actions as he held himself. You might be able to ask him more about this past a little later once you have gained more experience. Got something on your mind, do you? So when did you go to Kashyyyk? Oh, that was not until many years later to tell the truth. I spent quite some time wandering the galaxy. The Jedi just let you go? Why wouldn't they? I had refused my promotion to Jedi. Oh, I was a yeah. Padawan who had left the Order, nothing more. I traveled from one civilized system to the next, never staying long. I don't even think I knew what I was searching for. It wasn't as if my travels were pleasant either. There were plenty of folks who distrusted the Jedi after the war, or worse. Worse? Hmm. Well, hmm. I don't see why you were wondering in the first place. Worse? What could be worse? If people weren't treating me with suspicion, they were looking at me with greed. I don't know how many thought they could make use of me for their own ends. I got so sick of the treachery and deceit. I left the civilized parts of the galaxy and headed instead for the uncivilized parts. So that's when you went to Kashyyyk? Actually, I was on my way somewhere else when I crashed landed on Kashyyyk. The ship I was using was a rust bucket. You survived the crash landing on Kashyyyk? I'd taken some damage passing through an unexpected asteroid field, as I recall. But I wasn't completely without some systems. I could still guide her a bit when I crashed. It wasn't what I would call the smoothest landing, especially considering I ended up smack in the depths of the <laughs> Shadowlands. Yeah. But I lived. Okay, why didn't you just fix your ship and keep going then? <laughs> I'm no mechanic. And besides, after you plunge nose first in the trunk of a five kilometer high tree, uh, yeah. chances are you don't have much ship left. Hmm. So you crashed and stayed? Sure, why not? It seemed like an interesting enough place to spend a couple of decades exploring. Hmm. 
But how did you survive in the Shadowlands? Mm, that was a challenge at first. You've seen the kind of creatures that exist down there, and you miss the really big ones. I was still able to rely on the Force to keep me safe for the most part. The rest of the trick is keeping out of the way of most of the predators. Hmm. It couldn't have been easy. No, that's true. Still, most of the creatures grew accustomed to me, and I to them. At least none of them ever heard of a Jedi. <laughs> and the Wookiees didn't mind your presence? Oh, they did at first, oh yes. I can't say I was overly pleased to encounter a group of indigenous giant carpets either, I can assure you of that. <laughs> carpets. Uh, uh, but you seemed on fairly peaceful terms with them, at least when we arrived. Well, that was after two decades of helping them. Uh. They certainly didn't trust me at first. Mm, what did you help uh, them with? When I could. I would assist a few young ones who would get lost in the Shadowlands or attacked unexpectedly by the wildlife. I must say, for a while there the Wookiees actually thought I was some kind of benevolent forest god. <laughs> what? Amusing, really. I set them straight eventually. Okay. Um, wasn't it all a bit primitive for you? Not really. Kashyyyk is a place you can feel very small in. It felt good to devote my time to helping people and living simply. Hmm, and you didn't receive any news from the outside? What can I say? I did it all for the Wookiees. <laughs> the Wookiees? The Wookiees. Well, okay, maybe I needed some time on a quiet and remote planet, but if you ever need a friend, an incredibly strong hairball isn't a bad call. <laughs> yeah, I guess uh, Han Solo can agree. <laughs> um... And you sound quite fond of them. I suppose I am, in a way, despite the smell. For a race of gardeners, they've developed quite interestingly. Hmm, gardeners? You remember the alien computer, correct? Kashyyyk was meant to be an agricultural planet. The Wookiees were made for a reason. Or at least that's what I'm thinking. But I'm an old man who's had a long time to develop that opinion, so don't argue with me. At any rate, we should be moving along, don't you think? If you sat around this long in the Shadowlands, attack would eat you. All right. We asked Jolly a little bit about his time on Kashyyyk. You can ask him more about it later once you get more experience. Got something on Do your we have mind. anything more? So if you liked Kashyyyk so much, why did you want to leave? Are we back to that again? <laughs> yeah, I find it hard to believe you left the Wookiees just for some adventure. Hmm. What's the best way for me to approach this? Uh, perhaps it's time for a little story. <laughs> ah, couldn't you just answer the question for once? You just keep quiet there, you. I've had to put up with all your busybody questions, haven't I? Well, now you listen to a story, damn it! <clears throat> uh, okay. <laughs> oh, yes, the story. You almost made me forget about it. <laughs> nice try, but I'm not that old just yet. <laughs> now then, a young man sees a terribly venomous snake in his small village. Nervous, he watches the snake carefully until it leaves. The young man follows the snake into the forest. He clears the branches out of its path and helps it over obstacles. He even works to keep it fed. This is a very long story. Shush! Many nights pass, and still the young man continues to follow the snake. He even follows it into the sands of the great desert. In the desert, the snake eventually grows hungry. It turns and bites the young man poison quickly working its way into his system. Finally, curious, the snake looks at the boy as he lays dying and asks, Why were you foolish enough to follow me all the way out into the desert? The boy looks back and replies, Did I follow you? I thought I was leading you away from everyone else. And then he died. Hmm, am I supposed to be the snake? Well, now, that's what I wanted to see for myself. <laughs> um... And what's your judgment so far? I've told you before that you have a destiny before you. This does not mean, however, that your future is already written. They are not the same thing. You have the choice of which direction you take your destiny in. More than engine sucking Andor, certainly. But even <laughs> he had a choice. So far you've chosen to take the lighter path. Can you stay that course, even through the challenges ahead? We'll have to wait and see. I'm not here to judge you or tell you which path to take. I'm here ready to offer you my help, should you ask for it. I do that because I think it's important. 
More important than remaining in my home and pretending the galaxy doesn't exist. That's why I'm here. Hmm. All right. Thank you, Julie. I'm glad you came. <laughs> I'm rather glad I came too, really. You're a fine young lad. I hope... I hope things turn out well for you. Now then, I've chatted enough for one lifetime. Let's get this show on the road, shall we? Yeah, we really chatted uh, for a lifetime. You've dragged more out of Julie about his past than he probably intended. And he has no more tales to tell you for now. Perhaps once your mission is complete and your destiny finally realized, you can talk more. And Kendris? Kendris has said that he will stand by you no matter what path you take or what enemies you face. Okay, that's... That's... We only have to save Bastila and stop Death Malik now. Sorry for one episode of only talking to Julie, but I didn't want to miss this story. <laughs> really, I didn't want to miss his backstory. So let's fix the hyperdrive. The hyperdrive has been repaired and it's functioning properly. Now we should be able to fly. Again. Alright, let me go to the cockpit. And then we're heading towards... The Starforge. Here. Yeah.